students welcome for the next session and this is the next session of weather climate and adaptation part 2 in this part we will study whatever the adaptations can be seen in different kind of organisms in previous part in part 1 we have studied about what is weather what is climate and what is adaptation so how these things three things are related with each other that weather changes then climate changes of the region and if climate changes what are the impacts of the changed climate on the living organism so for that changed uh, environment in response to that a different type of organisms they change their body characters they adapt to the changed environmental conditions to survive otherwise they are not able to survive so for that purpose adaptations occur in living organism then in last lecture we have studied about the adaptations in the aquatic organism especially in case of fish so whatever the adaptations are done by fish to live in the water that all characters we have studied last time now next organism is amphibious group the organism which belong to amphibious groups that we are going to study the meaning of amphibious is what the organism which can live on both land and water both kind of environment these two environments are very much diverse very different but still this amphibious organisms have the ability to live in both kind of environment land and water so they are called as amphibious and such amphibious organ organisms have developed such characters they have adapted in such way that they can live in both conditions so what are that characters let us study now the very first character that can be seen in amphibious organism is they can breathe via their skin lungs and gills i repeat amphibious organisms can breathe in three way that is gill lung and skin first let me tell you about gills gills in case when frogs are in developing stage tadpole stage in that stage they breathe through gills because they continuously live in water lungs are useful for breathing on land when frog is on land they breathe via lungs as like the mammals do so okay and skin skin of the frog or amphibians is very moist sticky and slimy because when frog or any amphibious organism goes inside the water then breathing is done via skin so moist skin of the amphibious organisms come in contact with the water and the dissolved oxygen in the water can diffuse from water to the skin of the amphibious organism the best example of the amphibious organisms is frog and salamander they can live in both land and on land and in water yeah then what are other characteristics of and yes organism let me tell you the next character that can be seen is web feet web feet in the sense if this is the feet of the amphibious organism then there is a skin folding in between finger like structures of the feet so that act as a paddle and that help swimming faster in the water because of paddling it it appears like paddle like structure so that is called as web feet next character that can be seen in the amphibious adaptations is cold blooded yes the organism which belong to the class amphibious they are all cold blooded they cannot 
uh, adjust their body temperature according to the changing environment only the thing is that they are cold blooded and they live in a cold environments not so cold but in the water and as well as they can live in the on the land yeah so they are cold blooded next is they live on both land and water i told you about okay best example is frog and salamander yeah so the unique character of the amphibious adaptation is they can breathe by a three way skin lung and gills then next adaptation adaptation that we are going to study about aerial adaptations it is all related with the birds the adaptations that can be seen in the birds is all aerial adaptation now the first question arises that why the aerial adaptations also occurred in the organ because for the search of food if organisms having legs and it can move from one place to another place so this adaptation of organism help to search the food and water and needful things in a surrounding area but when competition increased for food as the evolution took place and many organisms were developed different type of organisms so there was lot of competition of food and to combat that competition of food some organisms developed aerial adaptations and due to aerial adaptations the birds can fly for far distances they can go far distances they can find food water there and they can live there so for that purpose this is the adaptation and what is this actually adaptation <clears throat> they can fly with the help of their wings and wings are nothing but the four limb of the organism four limbs means hand of the organism is converted into the wing the four limb adapted into wing and that can be used for flying purpose so this is the main adaptation that can be seen in the aerial adaptation in the birds then i'll tell you the other other adaptations of the birds body is covered by feathers all body is covered by feather because it protects from water and cold environment water in the rainy season and cold environment in winter season so feather protects from both it acts as a insulator also from cold weather in winter season and also it protects from the water in rainy season and how it can protect from water in rainy season the another adaptation that can be seen in the bird is waxy secretion on the feathers so in the skin there are glands that gland secretes the oily secretions or waxy secretions on the feathers so feather becomes oily and due to that water doesn't come in contact with the feathers so feathers are not getting wet that is why birds are protected from the water in rainy season and also it acts as an insulator in winter season so they are also protected from the cold temperature next adaptation that can be seen in the aerial adaptation is bones are hollow from inside they are spongy they have air gaps inside the bones so bones are hollow from inside hollow in the sense they have spongy structure inside and they have air gaps inside so it makes the bones very lighter lightweight and that is why bird can fly very easily because it is lightweight and mouth of the bird is converted into beak the beak is useful to pick the small grains insects and uh, small things that can be eaten by the 
birds even the carnivorous birds they tear the meat with the help of their beak so that is also a important adaptation in birds lungs are present for breathing yes the birds are terrestrial they live on land and uh, they breathe in air so they have lungs for breathing nervous system is well developed in birds yes because if nervous system is present then and then only the bird can fly and then find the places and food water there so because of that nervous system is well developed sense organs are well developed so all this together nervous system and uh, sense organs are useful for flying for finding food water and changing the directions and many things many functions are dependent on nervous system and sense organs that will help the bird to survive in the harsh conditions and also to survive in day to day life to find the food water and also to protect from the predators so both the things are very important nervous system and sense organs next adaptation that we are going to study is terrestrial adaptation so what is terrestrial adaptation the organisms which can live on land organisms adapted uh, to live on the land it is terrestrial adaptations and there are many type of terrestrial adaptations but mainly i would like to tell you about the plants and animals terrestrial plants the plants which can grow on land and animals which can live on land so what are the adaptation that can be seen in the plants which grow on land is plant body is differentiated into root stem and leaves plant body is differentiated into root stem and leaves well developed roots well developed stem and well developed uh, leaves can be seen in the terrestrial plants then what are the other adaptations that can be seen in the terrestrial plant is well adapted for water absorption and photosynthesis plants which grow on land they have well water absorption system and well photosynthesis can be done by the plants so they can produce much food and they act as a producer in the ecosystem yes so very important adaptation well water absorption by the roots and then the transportation system that is xylem and phloem is present in the terrestrial plant so this transportation system is well developed in the plants and photosynthesis for production of food because terrestrial plants they can grow much taller and much thicker so they have many branches and many leaves so at a huge extent it can produce a food by carrying out photosynthesis <coughs> deep root growth can be seen in the terrestrial plants plants which are very tall big heavy so their roots are very deep into ground for uh, holding purpose for absorption of water and mineral from the soil and in the search of water it goes deep 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 into the ground then yes terrestrial plants grow on land now we'll study the adaptations in the animal <coughs> terrestrial animals animals which can live on land are terrestrial animals they carry out the respiration through lungs means lungs are present in the terrestrial animals and they breathe in air with the help of lungs so respiration is through lungs in terrestrial animals nervous system is well developed yes 
नर्वस सिस्टम इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू कैरी आउट द फंक्शन टू फैसिलिटेट द फंक्शन ऑफ वेरियस सेंस ऑर्गन प्रेजेंट इन द बॉडी सो फॉर दैट पर्पज नर्वस सिस्टम इज वेल डेवलप्ड इन टेरेस्ट्रियल एनिमल्स सेंस ऑर्गन रिस्पॉन्स वेल टू एनवायरमेंट वॉट आई एम सेंग सेंस ऑर्गन रिस्पॉन्ड वेल टू एनवायरमेंट so whatever the changes occur in the environment in response to the environment sense organs are responding also for the survival of the animal it is very important that it should possess the sense organs and <clears throat> the help to find the food the help to protect itself the help to live and to find the proper place to uh, live and protect itself so all this purposes and many other functions dependent on the sense organs of the animals yeah. the next group is desert or xeric adaptations the organism which belong to this group desert adaptation or xeric adaptation Uh, that we study under this. So <clears throat> the best example I would like to give you the in case of animal desert or xeric adaptation in animal. Is camel. desert or xeric adaptation in case of animal is camel so what adaptations can be seen in the camel let us study one by one camel is a animal which is adapted to live in the desert and you know how harsh conditions are present in the desert temperature is very high it is all sandy and wind is blowing it is very speedy and many harsh conditions are there in the desert it is very hard to survive in the desert because there is a scarcity of water very very less availability of the water so in such harsh conditions camel can survive so how it can survive in such hard conditions let us do camel have padded feet feet are pad like so what happens because of that camel can walk easily over the land, over the sand so legs and feet of the camel is not penetrating in the soil so padded feet are present in the animal so the camel can walk very easily on the sand okay hairs are present in the nasal opening the nose of the camel have lot of hairs inside the nasal opening because wind is always blowing and with the wind the fine dust and sand particles are uh, just flowing so it can enter in the nasal cavity of the camel so to avoid that long hairs are present in the nasal opening of the camel next adaptation is hump is present on the back side of the camel which act as a storage of food because there is less availability of food in the desert so whenever the food is available camel have to eat it digest it and whatever the extra food is there that Uh, camel have to store in the hump so as food is stored in the hump the size of the hump increases so hump is for that as food storage next is big eyelashes eyelashes of the camel are big or bigger than any other organism because the sand is flowing 
in along with the air in the desert so it can enter into the eye of the camel and the camel is not able to see so big eyelashes are present in the camel then <clears throat> long legs are present in the camel why because long legs of the camel help the body of the camel keep away from the hot sand so somewhat it can stay away from the sort a very very hot sand and it can protect itself so long legs are present sweat glands are absent in the camel because to store the water to save the water okay if sweat glands are absent then water is saved there is no any water loss uh, by the sweating the sweat glands carry out the sweating and there is a water loss due to so sweat glands are absent in the camel this is the adaptation in the camel and storage of water this is also one of the important adaptation that can be seen in the camel is that it can store the water near about 80 liters of water can be stored by a adult fully grown camel and this water storage is because whenever the water is available that is just drunk by the camel and uh, most of the water most of the portion of that water is stored in the storage bag or compartment of the camel so the stored water can be used by the camel as needed because each and every day camel will not get the water to drink so this adaptation uh, is developed in the camel that it can store the water so likewise various type of animals develop their body characters they change their body characters and they survive in the changed environmental conditions so that is the reason the organisms present today have adapted to the changed environmental conditions and they are present today and will survive in the future if you have any doubts further doubts you can ask directly on the whatsapp group or on the call and you have to prepare your own notes in your own language and side by side i will also provide the notes of the same thank you